I don't know how to merge Mataji. How to merge Mataji? Because you are a devotee, you don't know how to merge. Uh, uh. You are merged to Mataji. Call Jarna Mataji. Hare Krishna? You are merged into the call Mataji. Okay, you know, maybe I might gonna be disconnected i'm gonna call you back if i disconnected okay Mataji. because i'm outside okay because i okay, have to Mataji. go to cooler bye okay Mataji.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा अंदर काल चला मन स्टार्ट <laughs> 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 Please accept my humble obeisances, Master Ji. I was just trying to call you, and then you called me. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Guru Maharaj, and Shri Prabhupada. Thank you. Um, so I think there are a few more devotees who are joining, but in the meantime, mm-hmm. I think we can start with the prayers. So, Oh, my God, I think God bless you. 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 श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं मह्यम ददाती स्वापदंतिकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नि श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवाचारी गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय उदीर नष्ट प्रायेशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्त भवती नैष्टुकी ओके सो वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर नाइन टेक्स ट्वेल्व टुडे यूलांड माता जी डू यू हैव अ बुक वुड यू लाइक टू रीड um i can read from my phone okay uh 12 right yeah so text 3 um canto 3 chapter yeah, 9 yeah. mhm oh krishna i have to say in a sense okay okay i'll try uh yeah i can should, should do you want me to read the sanskrit um you will try i'll try yes mataji go ahead nati prasidati tato pacetto pacare aradita sura ganer ridi bandha kamai yat sarva buddha daya yasan alapya yaiko nana janesh vasa hita surit anantar atma sorry that wasn't melodious at all but <clears throat> Um, now the translation, right? Yes, translation and full book. Okay. My Lord, you are not very much satisfied by the worship of the demigods who arrange for you, who arrange for your worship very pompously with various paraphernalia, but who are full of material hankerings. You are situated in everyone's heart as the super soul, just to show your causeless mercy. and you are the eternal well wisher but you are unavailable for the non devotee purpose by his thank grace is she she love is he bhakti don shila prabhupad ki jai <clears throat> the demigods in the celestial heavenly planets who are appointed and administrators of the material affairs are also devotees of the lord but at the same time they have desires for material opulence and sense gratification The Lord is so kind that he awards them all sorts of material happiness more than they can desire but he is not satisfied with them because they are not pure devotees The Lord does not want any of his innumerable sons the living entities 
to remain in the material world of twofold misery, to perpetually suffer the material pangs of birth, death, old age, and disease. The demigods in the heavenly planets and many devotees on this planet, on this planet also, want to remain in the material world as devotees of the Lord and take advantage of material happiness. They do so at risk of falling down to the lower status of existence, and this makes the Lord dissatisfied with them. Pure devotees are not desirous of any material enjoyment, nor are they averse to it. They completely dovetail their desires with the desires of the Lord and perform nothing on their personal account. Arjuna is a good example. On his own sentiment due to family affection, Arjuna did not want to fight. But finally, after hearing Shima Bhagavad Gita, he agreed to fight in the interest of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord is very much satisfied when pure devotees, with pure devotees because they do not act for sense gratification, but only in terms of the Lord's desire. As Paramatma or Super Soul, he is situated in everyone's heart, always giving everyone the chance of good counsel. Thus, everyone should take the opportunity and render transcendental loving service to him wholly and solely. The non-devotees, however, are neither like the demigods nor like the pure devotees, but are averse to the transcendental relationship with the Lord. They have revolted against the Lord and must perpetually undergo the reactions of their own activities. Bhagavad Gita 4.11 states, Ye yata mam prapadyante, tam stateva batam yaham. Although the Lord is equally kind to every living being, the living beings, for their own part, are able to please the Lord to either a greater or lesser extent. The demigods are called Sakama devotees, or devotees with material desires in mind, while the pure devotees are called Nishkama, Nish, Nishkama devotees because they have no desires for their personal interests. The Sakama devotees are self-interested because they do not think of others, and therefore they are not able to satisfy the Lord perfectly, whereas the pure devotees take the missionary responsibility of turning non-devotees into devotees, and they are therefore able to satisfy the Lord more than the demigods. The Lord is unmindful of the non-devotees, although he is sitting within everyone's heart as well-wisher and super-soul. However, he also gives them the chance to receive his mercy through his pure devotees who are engaged in missionary activities. Sometimes the Lord himself descends for missionary activities, as he did in the form of Lord Chaitanya. But mostly he sends his bona fide representatives, and thus he shows his costly mercy, his costless mercy towards the non-devotees. The Lord is so satisfied with his pure devotees that he wants to give them the credit for missionary success although he could do the work personally. This is the sign of his satisfaction with his pure Nishkama devotees compared to the Sakama devotees. By such transcendental activities, the Lord simultaneously becomes free from the charge of partiality and exhibits his pleasure with the devotees. Now a question arises. If the Lord is sitting in the hearts of non-devotees, why are they not moved to become devotees? It may be answered that the stubborn non-devotees are like the barren land or alkaline field where no agricultural activities can be successful. As part and parcel of the Lord, every individual living entity has a minute quantity of independence. And by misuse of this minute independence, the non-devotees commit offense after offense. To so both the Lord and his pure devotees engaged in missionary work. As a result of such acts, they become as barren as an alkaline field where there is no strength to produce. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for reading. Would you like to share anything from what you read? Mm. Yeah, a couple of things stood out to me. I hope I can still remember. Let me see. Um, yeah. Uh, So it starts out with saying that he's not satisfied with the the demigods um, because they're not pure devotees. Mm. One might think, oh, the Lord wants everyone to worship him, right? Mm. And if if people are not worshiping him, he's uh, not satisfied or he's upset. But actually, 
Srila Prabhupada explains that the Lord does not want, you know, if, if we still have material desires, we're still in the material world, which means that we'll take birth and, um, you know, our bodies will get sick, old, and we'll die. And actually, the Lord doesn't want us to suffer. suffer. So that's the real reason why he's less satisfied if we're not pure devotees. Um, because it means that we'll have to stay here. So that was one thing. Um, um, hold on one second. Um, yeah, and then uh, another thing that stood out to me was the missionary work that Srila Prabhupada talks about. So he mm -hmm. says... <clears throat> The Sakama devotees are self-interested because they do not think of others. Whereas the pure devotees take the missionary responsibility of turning non-devotees into devotees. Mm. I thought that was nice. Um, <clears throat> so that's one difference between the pure devotees and then the demigods or devotees with imperial desires. Um, Yeah, that's, that's it for my side. Can I make a comment, Mataji? Yeah, please. You know, when you read this, it, it almost, it, when we're reading these purports, now in, in here, it almost sounds like, well, if you're not a pure devotee, then nothing else will do. But I think the Lord is very merciful to all of us and even the demigods on all the different levels. Um, but when it, I, and we know this, but the way it's written, it feels very harsh. Like, well, if you're not a pure devotee, you're not doing the work of uh, Srila Prabhupada. We know that, you know, people are doing service and preaching in many different ways, okay, N different types of missionary work. And they're all equally um, given credit for that. And they say, well, you know, but the preaching is the most powerful. It, yes, but uh, by the same token, all of, the, all of the devotees, no matter what service they're performing, they're performing service. If they're doing it in a loving, uh, sincere way, I think the Lord acknowledges them too. He acknowledges the demigods and, and all the living entities. So I think when I first started Krishna consciousness, this seemed... Um, you know, you, you have to know how to read Prabhupada's purports in order to really understand what he's saying, too, because we're all important to the Lord, you know. I just wanted to make that comment because those things struck me, too. You know, only for the pure devotees and only... You know, only these people can see the Lord. And, well, maybe not. I mean, the Lord can show himself to whomever he feels like it. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, this is, it's, it, it, it just sounded very black and white to me. It's beautiful, but it sounded a little black and white to me. Thank you, Yolanda Mataji and Govardhanila Mataji uh, for sharing. Um, Yolanda Mataji, would you like to share anything else? Um, not right now. Okay. So, yeah, thank you, Gordon Yolanda Mataji, for the comment. Um, I was mostly thinking that this purport was mostly emphasizing um, how Krishna consciousness is a very internal process, uh, not so much of the externalities that uh, can please the Lord, but the internal disposition of one being Krishna consciousness is what is pleasing to the Lord. So that's that was like the main emphasis that I actually got from the the from this verse. Um, and um, secondly, the point that you were making, um, actually, that's true. Like what you were sharing, uh, but if we see on a much broader level. Um, the whole 
process of Krishna consciousness is actually uh, based on this one principle of making um, non-devotees to devotees. And uh, that is the reason how we all actually became devotees. So the whole movement of Krishna consciousness, Srila Prabhupada, based, based on this one principle. And um, that's what he's actually explaining here, um, that um, unless that preaching is there, um, it is not possible because of that preaching uh, that uh, representative of the Lord, he brings that bhakti lata bij, that seed of bhakti into the heart of the non-devotee. And therefore it is considered the highest amongst all the other um, forms of, I would not say like that, but I would uh, say that, yeah, yes. I mean, I will say it like that because it's the mercy of the spiritual master the representative of the Lord. Otherwise, it's not possible for anybody to even enter the realm of devotional service. So I, I kind of felt that that's why he's sharing that, that sometimes the Lord may appear, like in case of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or he may send his representatives for that. And actually, mm, it's not that we are not dear to the Lord. It's not about that. But uh, it is that um, he's saying that the Lord representatives, it is their service to the Lord that they are doing. The, mm -hmm. And their service is to bring the non-devotees to the lotus feet of Krishna. Yes. So that is why it is pleasing to the Lord. That's what he's saying here. He's saying here. But he's not saying that He's not saying the other part. He's not saying that, oh, it's just because the others are nodding, they're not dear to the Lord. That's not what he's saying. But here the emphasis is that because of the service that they are doing, keeping aside their own sense pleasures, like our spiritual masters, like all of our spiritual masters, even Srila Prabhupada, we have seen that so much of austerity, so much, they're traveling day in and day out and giving classes. Who knows what's going on with them? Mm -hmm. going, go, who knows what's going on in their own personal life? What are the challenges they are facing? Like how much of physical uh, stress that they have to go through? Like, you know, traveling and traveling and jet lag and this and that and all of those things. I mean, if I come back from India, I have to sleep for two weeks to compensate the jet lag and Maharaj comes and then he's going to give class. So they're keeping their personal um, comfort aside to serve Krishna and to bring more people closer to Krishna. So that is why it's very, that activity itself is extremely pleasing to the Lord. Oh and yes, Mataji. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for pointing that out. I, I guess I was just saying that for a beginner, a person who's first coming to Krishna consciousness, if they don't understand yeah. how to read that purport, they might uh -huh. get that feeling is what I was trying to say that, uh -huh. you know, um, that, you know, it's only the ones who are, you know, bringing people to Krishna consciousness. It, it would feel like that. But now um, I, you know, I don't take it that way, but I would have in the early days, definitely. Mm -hmm. I would have misinterpreted that passage for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mataji, that's why we all need guidance to kind of understand even, um, first of all, we need guidance to understand what Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. And then again, we need guidance to understand the purpose of Srila Prabhupada also. So that's why we need devotee association. Yeah, what you're saying is right there. It is without devotee association, one can actually, get, even reading Bhagavad Gita, the very words of Krishna wow. can even get distracted. They can, you know, go out of track. But yep. when we hear in the association of devotees, it makes a whole different sense. We can actually get the essence of what Krishna says um in his um, teachings so yeah yes mataji we definitely we need guidance even to understand the um teachings um as they are yeah so um so reading uh more from the purport um like um, 
like yolanda mathiji was sharing that that this point that um, krishna doesn't want us in this material world to suffer that i yeah. thought was extremely like a hopeful statement that um, like in many circumstances it's very easy for us to say krishna why did you put me here why are you putting me through this situation why is this happening to me and we have like so many questions as such but this purport actually clearly says that for that in the last paragraph to stop at is saying that because of that little free will we have we are actually putting us in a, in the situation krishna hmm. doesn't want us here that's right so therefore it is very important for us to actually understand the kindness that krishna is showing upon us that despite we want something that's not okay but you know krishna is very carefully guiding us right from our heart he is giving us uh, indications of what is right and what is wrong as parmatma he is sending his representatives he is sending his devotees he is giving us like every resource that we need in order to go back to him and then it's up to us how much we can utilize all the resources that he is giving because he doesn't want to force us in his relationship that's the most beautiful part yes he gives us that free will it might be small but we do have that free will mm-hmm. absolutely yes mata ji yeah and i believe uh it's understood that we even still have that free will in the spiritual world yes we yes. will always have free will as mm-hmm. individual uh entities individual spirit souls or fragmental um parts you know mm-hmm. uh, of the lord yeah absolutely yes mata ji yeah and another uh, thing that um, kind of uh, um, i felt was highlighted is the part where um, he he's talking about arjuna and he says that the pure devotees are not desirous of any material enjoyment nor they are averse to it so um, even in the festival of holy name maharaj was sharing this point he is saying that a pure devotee he doesn't he's not too attached he's not too detached so they actually know how they need to get attached um to the spiritual um energy and detach themselves from the material energy and also use the material energy in service to the lord so detachment actually means that not using that energy for their own sense pleasure but rather using krishna's energy that is krishna's uh, external energy in service to krishna so that is exactly again explained here that says that sakama and nishkama so sa means kama means to have desire and sakama means to have material desires now nishkama means to nish means to not have any desire but um the impersonalists or the non devotees they think that oh, should not have any desire um and that's exactly i think um the buddhist philosophy is based on they say that the root cause of all problems is to is to become desireless whereas um our teachings actually say that it is not that we become desireless nishkama doesn't mean we become desireless but nishkama actually means that we become um our desires are dovetailed to please the desire of krishna yes so that is the difference um that uh, has been um, indicated here and he says that when one does so it is extremely pleasing to the lord uh-huh. krishna is so pleased he's so pleased that he's not even pleased by the demigods who are actually offering so many uh, prayers they are actually offering so many um he like if we see think about the heaven or the heavenly 
planets they are actually living for so many years and then they have so much of resources like they have everything bedecked with gold with jewels and they are offering all of those for the pleasure of the lord but because their internal disposition is not nishkama that means they are not offering everything to the lord in service of the lord they still have some material desires mm-hmm. and that is the reason why krishna is not as pleased with them but they are more pleased with their pure devotees actually um there is a story i don't exactly remember i think it is either uh, i think it is ragnada goswami or sanatan goswami i don't remember i think it is ragnada goswami actually he gets um uh ragnada goswami i think is like so renounced that he had um he used to practically not eat anything practically just chant and chant and chant and chant like the thal he used to do and then i don't know if it's sanatan goswami one of them mataji i maybe somebody can share um later so um, actually this deity uh, there is a shaligram shila who comes and then he says that oh i want to be worshiped by you and then um they say i mean one of them says that i don't have anything how can i worship you and the shaligram shila says no no i want to be worshiped by you i will accept whatever you give me and he says that no no i i don't have anything all i think is practically water then no no whatever you give me i will accept i just want to be worshiped by you please accept me and then he says okay fine and then he takes the shaligram shila and then he puts the shaligram shila um in his uh, that little kind of a shoulder bag that he was carrying and then he so he makes an offering and he's like so renounced that he doesn't even have salt to put inside the offering and offer to the deity and then after some time uh, the deity comes and then the deity says can you please put some salt in my offering and then uh, the goswami he goes and says i told you that i don't have anything to offer to you but still you want to be worshiped by me then uh, the deity says okay fine even if you don't offer salt to me that's fine i'll accept whatever you give me i just want to be worshiped by you actually that's the mode of krishna like even if we whatever little we offer if we are offering with devotion that's what he wants and then he wants to stay in the heart of such a devotee Oh. he so he is really not looking for anything grand just like a big temple or nothing he was actually the goswami didn't even have a house or anything he used to just um chant under the shade of a tree and the deity was actually residing under the tree with him so mm. thank you for that story it's beautiful Yeah, so like that's how krishna is krishna is even willing i often times even think about like jagannath he goes on the streets in hot summer for so many days just to give darshan to everybody now what is the need of krishna to go through such an austerity especially like our jagannath like when he, they go we have to tie him with a rope like so hard we have to tie him so he doesn't move when everybody is carrying him here and there and all that that's an austerity we are tying krishna so hard through his ways so that he doesn't fall down you know why does he have to take such a kind of austerity it's not needed but he's doing it for the pleasure of his devotees so so such is such such is the nature of krishna like he is so kind that he is always 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 giving so many opportunities for us to actually come back to him so um and another um thing that um i wanted to share um is that the pure devotees actually they always offer um or they engage all their senses um in the service of the lord so i was actually thinking that maybe uh, since we had only one verse to read today uh, maybe we all can um share them on ourselves um any one devotee that you can think about 
um, has this unique feature of using their senses only for the pleasure of the Lord. Um, I was um, actually thinking, uh, I was sharing this with Yolanda Mataji also, like during the Festival of Holy Name. Um, I was thinking about specifically like Ajara Nishta Prabhu. Um, like if we see him, like he's an extremely quiet devotee. Uh, and he, he talks very little. And then even if he talks, one can hardly hear. Like he's like so quiet, so so silent and a uh, very gentle kind of a devotee. But when we go and see him, uh, when he's doing Harinam or when he's preaching, like we, we cannot even tell like it's the same devotee because um, he's singing like so loudly the holy name and then he's so interactive. He goes and he just talks to like everybody that he sees and then he asks them to take books, come to temple and so I kind of really admire that um, quality in him that when he is using the senses for himself, like he's just like so, so, so reserved. But when it comes to uh, serving the Lord, he's, he's just like so fired up. He's, he, it's really, it's amazing. It's amazing. Like how devotees can um, actually use, um, all all the uh, like their body their mind their words all of this in service to krishna and not for their own sense pleasures so uh, now we all can you all can also share like anybody even like Prabhupada or anybody who comes to your mind um that you have seen um something like um Um, anything that inspires you. Actually, um, is, is regarding the verse, I just wanted to share something. So I feel like the verse today is connected to the set of verses that I did. Was it yesterday or day before yesterday? I don't remember. But the set of verses um oh yeah day before yesterday and um the set of verses were explaining that when we use our senses for our own pleasure it's due to ignorance and because of using our ple senses for our pleasure when we try to um utilize them like that immediately we come under the external energy of the lord and as soon as we come under the external energy of the lord like it's a it's a recipe for unhappiness so it's not that the Lord does not love us. He loves everybody. He loves, uh, as Govardhan Lila Mataji was saying, he loves uh, and reciprocates with everyone. But the thing is, he becomes unhappy because we are unhappy. It's not that he's unhappy with us. Like, you know, if we see a friend who's sad, we become naturally sad because we just want him to be happy. We don't want him to be suffering, you know, with an addiction or something that is harming them so uh, so the Lord's unhappiness is because we are unhappy it's not that like he is uh, upset with us so that's something that I wanted to share yeah thank you so much for sharing yeah it's a really good point yeah Uh, I can also share about the devotee, like you know, that I was thinking of. I was thinking of Vishwakarma Prabhu, and like you know how he was such a simple man throughout his whole life. He served Kishore Kishori, and even when circumstances became very very difficult, like you know when there was not enough support for what he was doing, there was not enough appreciation. Financially, it was so difficult. Like, you know, and he has two children, so which makes it even more difficult. You know, it's different when we are suffering, but it's more difficult to see our children suffering. So in between all of those things, his determination to serve Kishore Kishori never wavered. So his daughter was telling me, like, when they would go to other temples, they, he would receive offers. They would tell him, like, we'll give you a house, we'll give you a car, 
you know if you can stay right next to the temple and serve the deities here we'll give you everything you need but still he would say i cannot leave kishor kishori for money and he never left even though like you know towards the end like the challenges and risks were so high that he was taking just to be there in their service yeah so i was just appreciating that thank you so much for sharing anyone else would like to share Actually, I was hearing uh, from Shatrupa Mataji about the Madhi Gopi Mataji, um, Madhi Gopi Mataji's departure, and uh, she was actually telling me that, um, like two three months ago, when she got to know that she's going to leave her body, uh, and the doctors had actually told her that she would just live like for a few weeks more, so. Mati Gopi Mati Ji had told Shatrupa Mati Ji, "How can I um, just you not know, leave everything, and how can I prepare myself?" And actually, she she asked this first question. It seems that how can I prepare myself that when I leave, I can actually think of Krishna. And um, then on every time she went, Shatrupa Mati Ji used to always Mati Gopi Mati Ji used to always ask her the same question. like how can i remember krishna when i'm going to leave this body and then um, eventually she she knew you know how it was happening um, how her body was slow, slowly um, it stopped res- uh, responding to the medicines and eventually like her, her body was um, giving up so then um, she was saying that slow slowly she stopped to eat and then uh because her body wouldn't digest and then she had the, she was having a lot of problems with um the, the intake of any kind of food so she just accepted the fact that she could not eat anything anymore and then she slowly started stopped eating and then she for the last two weeks she even did not drink water mm. and the day when when she she was leaving her body in the morning um she was breathing heavily and it seems that the shatrupa mata ji is a nurse and she used to work in the icu earlier so um she had seen like lot of different people leave their bodies and she was even assisting them when because she was working in the hospital um so she said that um like when she saw them they would often times close their eyes when they would leave their body but in case of mati gopi mati ji she was first she was breathing heavily and then uh, when they all went and calmed down like prabhu and the and their children were there uh, prabhu went to her and then prabhu told her seems that i am going to take care of the kids you go with krishna and uh, the kids also told her her mother that we are with papa and krishna is going to take care of us so you don't worry at all you go with krishna and immediately within 10 minutes she left and um she was saying how her eyes were wide open and the devotees actually felt because they were all chanting that krishna is personally present there and she saw krishna before they could before she left her body so she uh-huh. was saying that mati gopi mati ji's departure was actually a great inspiration for the devotees in nepal like people actually started to believe how uh, by the process of bhakti like one can actually feel the presence of krishna when they actually leave their body wow. this is beautiful so krishna actually gives all all that is needed krishna provides everything if we take true shelter of him and then if we actually think of him 
then he he provides devotees who can chant for us he provides that strength he provides like everything that one needs to go back to him wow very beautiful thank you very much for you know explaining all of that and the wonderful stories uh prema you know very inspiring for me i mean you know at this moment i can't think of anyone i the only one that comes to mind is the one i've read about which was yamuna Devi. but i i don't mm-hmm. want to uh, i can't remember all the examples now you know i read the book her, about her life uh be quite a while back now and all i know is every minute she was trying to serve srila prabhupada and krishna i mean i i felt like if only i could be a little bit like her you know she never ever wavered from that all her life once she met prabhupada you know she she stuck by him all the way through from beginning to end but there was there was more there were special examples and I, I can't remember them all right now but she is for me she's she was is and always will be very inspirational for me mm-hmm. always and you know the way the way she looked at Srila Prabhupada like a father for her it was just beautiful the way he came into her life at a time when you know she never saw her she didn't see her father anymore and so he was he was like the father she never had you know and uh she did everything he said no matter what it was she she you know she just lived for him it was just amazing it, you know if only i could do such such a thing it would be mm-hmm. amazing the way she served i found her to be very inspirational for me i mean there are many devotees around too but she is my in my heart you know she's in my heart yeah thank you mata ji thank you so much for sharing your inspiration with us yeah is anyone else on the call i know antaranga seva mata ji is there but is shanti mata ji janva mata ji did any one of them join Or Prabhula Madhuri Mataji, I don't know who else is on the call. And Dheera Shanta Mataji, she joined, right. but then her call dropped. I think she was oh. somewhere outside. Oh, Janva okay. Mataji, I called, but she didn't uh, answer the phone. Okay, okay. Yolanda Mataji, Antaranga Seva Mataji, would you like to share any inspirations you have? uh mata ji for me uh, there are so many uh, especially rompar maharaj is one of the biggest in, inspiration because i see him continuously he is engaged in preaching serving the lord and other than his holiness rompar maharaj is uh, there are many devotees from vrindavan temple krishna balram temple one of them is mukunda datta das there are two mukunda datta das there so the one who he comes to is from chicago also he is a very good scholar like i don't know how he is so well versed with all the scriptures and he quotes from here and there if you hear his lectures of shrimad bhagavatam or anything they are very very amazing uh, he is very very learned and um, i think in his young age he came to krishna consciousness and then he had to take a back seat because uh, his mother was not well and he said that i also have to look after my mother she has given me birth so he was living in the temple and just to serve his mother i think he went back he did not leave krishna consciousness he even preached to her so while passing away like she she started attend, attending the temple programs the sunday feast programs because of him he, she was sitting on the wheelchair and he used to bring her to the temple so uh, like before uh, uh, passing away she started appreciating the value of uh, krishna nam 
the holy name she also of course appreciated the prasadam and after his mother passed away he came back again in the temple he is also a very good kirtanier and like you asked a devotee who is engaging all his senses so for me he is the one i see him doing many many other things but especially uh, his preaching and his kirtan is very very effective and especially the knowledge he has i have seen very very few devotees who have that knowledge like even when he is taking gita classes or anything he knows each and every verse and purport of each and every verse by heart and he will ask some questions and no one will be able to answer and then he will say that okay this is quoted in this text and verse number this and uh, it is really amazing so the way he thoroughly he has read prabhupada's books and valued them and he is passing on the knowledge is very very inspiring for me that's all i have not to say thank you mata ji thank you for sharing Yolanda Madhuri would you like to share any of your inspirations Um yeah I've been thinking about it um all your examples were very wonderful except especially the devotees who recently um left their bodies um um yeah my mind goes to Shilaram Padaswami um particularly how much he is focused on executing Shila Prabhupada's mission that always strikes me whenever he reads his um offering that it's always focused on service to Prabhupada and his cause and it's not so much about sentimental feelings or uh philosophy or anything like that uh and Mm. Uh, I feel that I can learn a lot from that humble moment of service that he calls in to his spiritual master. Um so that's one example. Another example was uh the person or the devotee who introduced me to Krishna consciousness, um Yamuna Jeevna Prabhu. I feel that he is very much serious about um taking up this process of krishna consciousness and i feel that he is very exemplary in how as grahastas we can still um fully engage ourselves <clears throat> without any compromises <clears throat> excuse me um and to this day that's still inspiring me to somehow follow that great example um Yeah, and that's it for my side. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Rabbi so Yolanda Mataji, for sharing. Thank you. Sorry, I muted my phone and I was talking. and i realized that my phone muted yeah thank you all very much for sharing it's always very inspiring to hear our inspirations and take inspirations from each other to continue so okay so shall we end here we'll continue again tomorrow sure yeah Thank you, Shila Prabhupada. Jai, 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 Jai,